Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. Today's lesson is a very exciting lesson because we're going to be providing an introduction to object-oriented programming. Specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about, just in general, what object-oriented programming is. We're going to talk about how, in a way, we've been doing somewhat of a, a means of object-oriented programming through the use of associative arrays. We're going to talk about what classes are and how to define them. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what objects are and the difference between uh, classes and objects, which is a, a common difficulty to understand for, for first-time um, students to object-oriented programming. We're going to talk about what's known as instantiating classes or creating objects. And then we're going to talk about how to um, basically get and set uh, properties of an object we create. Uh, so object-oriented programming is basically, it's, it's a it's a paradigm of, of programming that um, allows you or allows you to work with objects uh, in your code. So basically, you take, you take uh, real-world objects, for example, such as a person, and you model that in your code with user-defined data types. Um, and basically, your programs work by manipulating and doing performing different functions on these uh, different objects. Uh, it's kind of an abstract concept, so it's maybe best explained by example. So as mentioned, for example, may, in the real world, maybe you have um, you have a per well. There's people, and you have a, a person who has a first name and a last name. Now, what we can do is we can take this sort of real-world object, this person object, and model that in our code in a um, code object. Um, and basically what we do is we create a user-defined data type that um, basically encapsulates the information about that real-world object person. So we might uh, create a class in our code um, that is a that, rep that allows us to create what are known as person objects. Uh, and a person object will have uh, different attributes to it. It might have, for example, a first name attribute and a last name attribute. So basically what we do uh, for object-oriented programming is take sort of these real-world um, objects and model them in our code as a user-defined data type. So this person um, object is actually a user-defined data type that we're going to create, and that's known as, as creating a class. Uh, now there's a number of, of benefits for using object-oriented programming, one of which is that um, it makes your code a little bit easier to understand and talk about. humans. Um, are more more intu it's more intuitive to humans to talk about dealing with different objects, for example, a person object, and saying, I want to perform this operation on a person, as opposed to talking about integers and arrays. Additionally, uh, it's a way to pass around um, a related amount of data in sort of one, one particular variable. So for example, um, uh, let's say actually one of the things we're going to be creating in our uh, web application is we're going to be creating a cart object that's going to represent a shopping cart in our store. Uh, so what we can do is maybe we'll have uh, a method that'll say calculate total and we can pass it uh, and a, pass it a here we'll just this isn't the proper syntax but pass it a cart object. What that's going to allow us to do is um, within that cart object it's going to contain all the information about all of the items in the cart how many quantities they are, and so forth. Now, this is opposed to maybe instead um, having a calc total method where we have to provide the item ID of each uh, particular item and the price of each particular item, and so forth. Um, and now we can pass all that information in a cart. Another way would be if we had an example that wanted to print out the name of a person, we could just pass it um, a person object and it could use that to extract the first name and last name of the person as opposed to having to pass two separate parameters first name and last name. One other thing to notice also to note uh, an important feature of objects is that objects uh, not only can they contain sort of data but they also can have methods on them so we actually could have this cart object that contains information about all the items in our cart and this cart object we can actually do something called create methods 
where the cart object will have a method called calc total. And basically what it is is we um, get a cart object in our code, we define it, we populate it with items, and um, then what we do is we run this method on uh, cart by itself on the cart object and it will calculate the total for it. So uh, that's another benefit of using uh, objects is um, they contain, contain data and then they also have um, methods and functions that they can uh, operate on themselves with. In a way we've kind of been using um, object-oriented programming a little bit through the use of associative arrays. Um, basically, a, as mentioned, one of the benefits of using objects is you can encapsulate a, a number of different pieces of data, for example, about a person um, in one variable. You can create a person, um, a person data type and then create a variable that's of that person data type and you just pass around that one variable and it contains all of the information. You can access all of the information as we're going to see, such as the first name and the last name. We've kind of been doing that with, um, for example, we've been using uh, an array in our web application a lot called item. Um, and item has contained uh, a number of keys, for example, item ID. And basically, when we have a function that needs to operate on an item, we're just passing it um, this variable item. Uh, so in a way, we've kind of already been doing that sort of data encapsulation. Now, what object-oriented programming does is it gives us a formal way to declare um, basically what properties are part of an item. So for example, in our, in our store items, um, they have a couple of different properties that we've been using. They have an item ID, a name, a price, a description, and an image file extension. And the way we've been doing that is we've been modeling that as an associative array with a key for each of these different properties of an item and then setting a value to it. Um, but an associative array is just a uh, general array that um, anybody can use. You can add, you know, you could add other key values to it. So for example, you could just call something, assign a random key to it. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to create a user-defined data type for an item. We're going to create an item class. What, and that's going to allow us to create item objects. And we'll explain the difference between classes and objects in a, in a little bit. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is basically restrict um, what, at, what properties and what values a particular item object can have. 